it's getting a little windy out here so hopefully the sound is quality isn't too bad that's why i have this paper towel on here it's cutting the wind sounds down um, but let's talk a little bit about uh, chemical formulas as conversion factors so you know when you have a formula like h2o that tells you you have two hydrogen atoms for every oxygen atom or two hydrogen atoms for every water molecule, right? It also tells you this, though, and this is because of Avogadro's relationships. Uh, one mole of oxygen in water is chemically equivalent to two moles of hydrogen, like that, just the atoms of hydrogen, like so, so you can you can set up relationships within chemical formulas and use those formulas as conversion factors. So, in this question down here, it says, how many moles of atoms are found in one mole of the following? It says moles of atoms in one mole of copper, right? So that's a relatively straightforward one mole of copper is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper. And that's just from the definition of Avogadro's number. But then the question is, uh, moles of fluorine um, atoms, actually that's what that's supposed to say, in one mole of F2. Okay. So to do that one, it's a little bit trickier, but uh, same kind of idea. If I have one mole of fluorine, right, then I have of F2, then I have two moles of F for every one mole of F2. And that comes from this idea, like the mole ratio that I've been sh I showed up here for water. The mole ratio in fluorine for uh, fluorine atoms in F2 would be two moles of fluorine for every mole of F2. And then I can do Avogadro's number 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So I'm just going to say F, so this doesn't say anything other than, so that implies fluorine atoms for every one mole of F like this. And so then these units will cancel out. And then I'll have two times this number, which would be, uh, I guess, 1.2044 uh, times 10 to the 24th uh, fluorine atoms, like that. Oh, my pen stopped working. There we go, like that. Okay? So let's do a couple more. Again, I left some words out in these problems because these are supposed to be how many moles of atoms are found, right? So how many moles of oxygen atoms are in copper nitrate, copper 2 nitrate? And so what you need to do is say I have one mole, right, of CuNO3-2. And then what you need to do is find the mole ratio between oxygen and copper 2 nitrate. So I'm going to stop the video, and I'll, when we start, I'll have the number there. But you try and pause, and you try to figure out what that number is. So there's six moles of oxygen for every mole of copper nitrate. So we just want the moles of oxygen and one mole of copper nitrate. So it doesn't say moles of atoms. Or I mean, not it doesn't say atoms of oxygen, it just says moles. So we're going to stop here because this will give me moles. And so it'll be just six moles in there. All right, and this will cancel like that. And it leaves me with the units that I'm looking for. So be really careful. Now, these next problems are for you to practice. And what we're going to do, and I changed the wording, and I changed it up here too. It says how, uh, sorry, how many atoms, not how many I screwed something up here. Well, let me erase that. It's supposed to say how many atoms are found, right? This says find atoms of copper in uh, this many grams of copper. This one says moles. So this one, you're not going to use Avogadro's number because you're going to stop at the number of moles, right, and not go all the way to atoms. And this one is also moles. Uh, and we're going to, so we're going to, again, uh, stop at, 
calculation of the mole and not go all the way to atom. So be real careful about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause. I'm going to write out the answer for A, and we'll talk about it, and then we'll pause, and we'll do B, and likewise with C. So here's the first one. Uh, I started with I need to find atoms on the left-hand side over here. And then I said, uh, I gave you starting with the number of grams of copper. I went and looked up the molar mass of copper on the periodic table. I used the one from your book that's rounded to the hundredths place and not the one that's on that periodic table I've been showing you, but the one I used is I used the value from your book. And then, uh, then it's always the number of atoms in a mole. So then I get to the number of atoms of copper just like that no moles or anything you just write copper uh, and then in terms of sig figs there's three so it's it's the last sig fig there so this is 1.26 times 10 to the 16th copper atoms like this so that's the answer now i wanted to point out um, i've been making this comment on some of your homeworks when i say uh, show your work one of the things i want you to do is actually give me the unrounded number because it's kind of hard to show work all the time but if you can show me the unrounded number and then round it then i'll know you're doing the work okay so try to always do that in your problems and I'll just consistently take a point off every time you don't do that. So, anyways, let's go ahead and do the next one. And we're going to be calculating the moles of fluorine and this many grams of F2. Okay, so here's the next problem. It says, uh, starting with the 3.5 times 10 to the 12th, the minus 12th grams of fluorine. This is the elemental fluorine. And I'm looking for moles of F. So then... I need the molar mass of F2, which uh, fluorine is 19, so F2 would be 38. So 38 grams of F2 for every mole of F2. And then there's two moles of F. Remember, I'm not looking for F2. I'm just looking for element uh, atomic fluorine. So it's F, two moles of F for every mole of F2. And I go ahead and do the math, and I get this is my answer. Now, this one only has two significant figures because of the 3.5. And so I end up rounding the answer to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 13 moles of fluorine. And then, uh, again, I'll pause and go ahead and try doing this next one. Now, my recommendation is if you do these and you get the setup wrong and the calculation or the calculation wrong, you should just do the whole thing again and try to make sure that you learn this pattern because you get to use it over and over and over again once you learn it. And then if you've sort of got this one down, then all the next ones get easier to do. Okay. So we'll pause. Okay, so uh, this problem begins to set up just like the other ones do, but then you have to calculate the molar mass of copper and nitrate. And so that's what I've shown over on the right here. It's 63.55 from the periodic table, right? Times 1, because there's 1. There's a 2 here, right? And there's a 1 here, so I said 14.01 times 2. And then there's 3 oxygens, but it's times 2. So what I did, I did 3 times 2. Now, if you did times 6, it means the same thing. I just want to make sure people saw that's where I got that number from. The 16 should start to be familiar to you because that's the molar mass of um, oxygen. Now, in order to do this, then, I have this molar mass. This is for grams of copper nitrate. So that's cuno 3 Two, and I'm going to move this over because I just realized I put it in a bad spot. And then I will continue the problem. I need to convert that over to moles like this. So the 187.57, that's grams per mole. I want the grams to cancel, so the 187 goes on the bottom. And that's of CUNO32. I know that gets tedious to write after a while. And then uh, one mole of Cu. And then one more step, because I want moles of oxygen, okay? And so I'm going to say six moles of oxygen for every one mole of, and then I'm going to squeeze this in here, CuNO32, copper nitrate, like that. And so then we'll do our calculation. Okay, so I did the calculation, and this is what I get. And then I have three significant figures, so I'll round it that that place here. So 0 0.384 moles of oxygen, like that. And again, if, 
on your homework try to report the unrounded and the rounded number both